There we go. All right. Great. So good evening. A uh, couple of housekeeping items that we want to cover uh, before we get into the meat and potatoes of the program and the operations for the year. Uh, we'll be dropping the link to the leader's guide into the chat a couple times, but uh, it is available on the camp website. If you go to the leaders area, uh, that is there. On Friday, we sent out a survey and that was to all of our current listed contacts for all of our reservations. Uh, and that asked a couple of items that asked uh, for you to go to a survey link and just let us know a couple of items. One, uh, approximately how many scouts and adults you think you'll be bringing this summer but also to just confirm the week and the contact information that we have on file. So if you did not get that, uh, please let us know and we'll make sure that you get that uh, for your unit. Uh, the reason we're having, we're asking that you also verify the week that is listed on the reservation uh, is because this is one of the every uh, once in a decade, once in 10 years where the, the calendar shifts slightly. And so the 4th of July is not during week one. The 4th of July is Sunday of week two. Uh, and it just, it happens like that once every 10 years, we want to just make sure everyone knows the, the week reservation that they have, uh, and we don't have any, any mix-ups in attendance. Uh, if you and your unit are interested in having any of us or any of the senior staff come out to a unit meeting, whether it be in-person or virtual, we can do a camp promotions visit. We'd like to get out and see the, see the troops and crews uh, pretty often. So just uh, message us. Our emails will be at the very end of the slide deck, but info at camponoxit.org, and that'll go to a whole bunch of us. And finally, uh, just as a reminder for, for really everyone, it's OA election season. Uh, whether you're in Heart of New England Council or not, uh, OA elections are happening, and there are some changes to the, the guidelines this year for eligibility. Uh, so please be sure you, you reach out, if you haven't already, to your, your lodge contacts and, and make that election uh, scheduled. All right, let's move on. All right, well, good evening. Um, Danny Negan, I'm the camp director. I'm excited to be here with you tonight. I wish we were in person, but we're going to have a good meeting. I uh, want to answer all your questions. I want to make sure that when you leave, we have all the information that we've, uh, we've given you all the information or we are tracking it down and getting it to you soon. We uh, have a full team here tonight. Let's head to the next slide. A little bit about before we go to Will Neville with the program side, on the operation side of the house, we have met with the food service. We have a meeting with the entire camping group and the council president and the council uh, acting director this week. And we are full steam ahead for uh, a normal, new normal summer at Winoxit. We have an incredible staff in place. Um, we we have a really senior staff. So the, the area directors who are coming back this year have been on staff before. I mean, just take a look at this list. We have Rachel Zelli, who was the director at Split Rock in previous years. Adam Morris, a longtime staff member with the CITs. Will Neville, 10, 15 years is on staff. Owen Doherty, the chat master tonight, our communications director, he'll be taking care of our media and uh, relations, getting information out to all the troops. Um, we have a stacked senior staff. We have a few junior staff positions. Later on, we'll talk a little bit more about that. We still have a few targeted junior staff positions. I want to hand over now to Will Neville with more about the program for 2021 at Camp Winoxit. Thank you all for spending your Sunday night with us. Yeah, welcome everybody. Um, so just to Danny's point, 100% of our senior staff are returning and that includes a large contingent who are have worked in either their area before or who have been the director of the area before and almost everyone has worked in the area that they are uh, a senior staff member in. But a large, large percentage of them were either the 17 or 18 year olds a couple of years ago in that area and they are very equipped and prepared to lead those program areas. So I'm super excited we were able to retain that staff even with the off year. Um, I'm going to roll through some of our the program plan, and it's going to look a lot like it has in past years. Obviously, there might be some adjustments as the state of New Hampshire releases new guidelines and we get some more information, but we are planning for a as normal of a summer as possible with more changes to be communicated in the future. Um, 
We will have our typical two merit badges in the morning, one at 9 a.m., one at 10 a.m., followed by a patrol time activity, um, and then our lunch, and followed by unit development time, which is a, will be a time for <clears throat> you all to head back to your site, get some downtime. Uh, then the third merit badge at 2 p.m., open program in the afternoon per usual. Uh, that will probably take their majority of the accommodation of whatever we have to make this year, whether it'll be registration for different events or us having you guys help us select things a bit in advance, whatever it is. But we'll let you know that as soon as the state tells us the guidelines. Uh, then obviously colors, dinner, and open program in the evening is going to be uh, plan to be the same, but there might be a small adjustments. Uh, we've been talking to the OA uh, about doing smaller tap outs. We've been talking about <clears throat> spreading things out so that we get everybody the same program they would get every other year, just maybe delivered in smaller nuggets uh, so that that way we can maintain any guidelines that are required by the state. Um, so for this year, we have added six new merit badges. Um, they are fish and wildlife management, geology, animation, mining and society, nature, and signs, signals, and codes. Uh, those are spread out over three different program areas. It'll be nature, scout craft, and handicraft. And we've, we've also shifted some of our badges into our NOVA program, which is a comprehensive older boy program that spans the whole week. It takes over all three merit badge sessions uh, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, and some of those, some of these will be shifted into there. And I'm actually going to let Rachel go into detail about that. Thanks, Will. Yeah, so this is going to be a brand new program, as Will said. It's something that we're really excited to offer. We saw this big need for older scouts in our program who maybe have already earned all the merit badges they needed for Eagle Scouts or just looking for something that is really niche and really of interest for them, as we know a lot of our scouts are really engaged in the STEM field already. So the Supernova Award is this um, award in scouting. So both Scouts VSA and Venturing have their own versions of it. They're a little bit different, but they're similar enough that we can run them cohesively with both Venturing and Scouts VSA at the same time. And while they earn the Supernova Awards, they'll also earn individual Nova Awards as well. So as Will said, this takes up a great portion of the program. So if you kind of think of the COPE program and how that runs, you have a small cohort of scouts together and they stay in that same group uh, Monday through Friday during most of the program time, except for open program. So it is 20 plus hours to earn this award, but you gain a lot of time because you don't have to do that transition between periods and around camp. So you get a lot of extra time in your day that you would not otherwise get. You also get some exclusive merit badges that only kids that um, earn the supernova will get. And we'll talk about more of the merit badges on the next pages as well. So some of the specific merit badges um, that you will earn by um, completing the supernova are gonna be the archi architect, aviation, composite materials, mammoth studies, pulp and paper, soil and water conservation, weather and scholarship. And there is a note about scholarship uh, to be able to earn this, you need to be able to show a report card um, and a letter from your principal to say that you are uh, in good standing with your school and I believe A's and B's on the report card. So that is something that they will need bringing in as well. Sorry guys. Um, we're also excited this year to offer a few new opportunities that don't confine to uh, merit badges. We're offering interpreter strips. Uh, several of our senior staff members uh, are fluent in French or Spanish. So we will be able to award those strips to scouts that can demonstrate proficiency in those languages. Um, if you just simply Google like BSA 
interpreter strips. It'll show you the requirements, but it's like a five minute conversation, translating a, um, a 200 word document um, and a few other short requirements that we will sign off. And then much like we would give a troop or a unit uh, after their scouts went through Brown Sea, we won't actually, you know, there's no blue card. What we'll do is we'll give you a piece of documentation that says, you know, the program office at Camp Onoxit, uh has evaluated X scout and they've shown the proficiency needed to earn the interpreter strip award for French. And then after that, you can back at your court of honor or however you wish, award those strips. Um, same with the Paul Bunyan Award. It's a BSA award that uh, goes into woodworking and you'd be able to teach the totem chip, talk about some more in-depth woodworking that's let more, um, how do I put it? that has a higher level of proficiency than just a totem chip. Um, and then also this year, we have uh, taken our triathlon and renamed it after Lucian Tiberge, who was a longtime skier who came to camp, um, who unfortunately passed away several years ago. And we will be, we've renamed it in his honor. Um, it's, uh, the program is great. The kids, they take a quarter mile swim out to a buoy, bike around the lake, and then run back into camp for the last about half mile. Um, and that has been renamed as he dominated that competition. <laughs> Every time he competed in it. Will, can we go off script for a second? Um, yeah. Just a thought to, about about the, the Supernova Award for the older scouts. Uh, whenever something like this new comes to camp, I often see a rush to troops to try to get scouts into this. I know you've been talking about this for two years. This is something that we see as part of the program going forward. And so when Rachel talks about having older scouts do this, this is something that will be there in the future and that it's not something we should try to get everyone to do this year. This is something to, to it, it may not be the first or second, it might be the third year in camp that they should do this. And, oh, and I, I just wanted yeah, to drive absolutely. that point home. Yeah, and third or fourth year at least. And it shouldn't be something people do because they want to earn eight merit badges. It should be something they do because they have a genuine interest in STEM. Um, if you signed up for a 20 hour course that you were only there to get a check mark on you wouldn't have a good time right no matter what it is uh, a professional development course for the teachers in this chat uh whatever it is <laughs> um, you should have your scouts sign up for this program if they have a genuine interest in stem um and because of the way it's shaped where it's comprehensive where we don't do aviation merit badge and then architectural merit badge and then whatever it is. We have melded all the requirements so that they are all earned concurrently in a way that's really natural and fitting. Um, and yeah, I think it's really important to drive that point home that this is going to be for your third or fourth year scouts, fourth or fifth year scouts even, who have done a lot of what's been you can offer at camp. Um, you know, there's so much that we do here that you could go to camp for, full, for three full years and never repeat a thing. I could absolutely fill someone's schedule that way. Um, so you shouldn't, this should not be for the tw a 12 year old. This is 14, 15, 16 year olds. This should be well, going out with this. I have two great questions in the chat about the Nova Award I want to get while we're still on this. Yeah. Um, first, if a scout already has uh, one of the merit badges offered during the NOVA program, are there other opportunities? Um, what happens if they already have it? Yeah, um, because of how it is structured as this comprehensive program, uh, they will just have to, they will earn that badge a second time. Um, you know, we can't pull a kid out because it's not structured from the 9 to 10 and the 10 to 11 and the 2 to 3. Uh, it's just not going to work that way. It's how we make it so that like every merit badge you earn, you have first aid requirements. We're not doing the first aid requirements eight times. Um, so it's how we structured it so that those, we can get the most out of the week. So unfortunately you can't get pulled out, but the way it's taught, it's so comprehensive that I don't think they're going to feel as though they're earning, you know, 
soil and water conservation for a second time. They'll feel like they're learning a smaller piece of a big picture. And then the second question here is some clarification. Do scouts need to have all A's and B's to get the NOVA award or just for the scholarship merit badge? Uh, for the scholarship merit badge, but you're required to earn a NOVA award. Um, you have to have the scholarship merit badge or the scholarship, whatever the equivalent is the name in the venturing program. So the answer is yes, you need to have the A's and the B's. Uh, whatever the requirement is for scholarship merit badge is the requirement for the NOVA award. Awesome. Those are all the questions right now for about Supernova. Great. Thank you, Will. I, I just wanted to drive that home. You did an awesome job doing that. Um, great. Um, I believe an email went out with some program supplementals on Friday um, that help hone uh, the focus for some of the scouts. So if you don't want to send out a leader's guide to every single family uh, that might not necessarily need it up the whole thing, we have these three to four page guides that say, here's what we offer for first year campers. Here's what we offer for 14 plus one ox of pioneers, et cetera. Uh, and those are currently available. Andy has sent them out. Um, so feel free to pre peruse those. If you have questions, let me know. Um, and once again, those will also likely be updated as uh, guidance requires, but I will make sure we get an email to everyone anytime anything gets updated. Adam? Yeah, thanks, Will. So um, for those who don't know me, I'm Adam Morris. I'm the CIT director. Um, I wanted to take a couple of minutes here just to talk about the CIT program. And for those that aren't familiar, the counselor and training program is, you know, in a way it's a program geared towards scouts who are a little bit older, you know, fourth or, or fifth year, third, fourth or fifth year campers. And the requirements for this program are that you be first class and 14 basically by the end of June. Uh, for the summer. Um, and the CIT program is about leadership training and development. Um, it's about also, you know, for those who are interested in working on the Winaka staff in the future, but not necessarily. Um, overall, how it works is that it's a four week program, you come to staff week, and uh, you work with the staff there set up camp and get trained and then you choose three other weeks of your choice throughout the summer to come back during the program weeks to work in all the different program areas and get that experience. And what they will do is I will do certain trainings with them every day and they'll get an opportunity to work in every program area with that staff and with those area directors to sort of get a feeling for what it's like to work in all the different areas of camp. Um, they get to do other things as well. I take them up the mountain a couple of times to a cave, which people don't often get to go to. Um, I do other sort of out of camp programs, especially for them. Um, and they get to live down in the CIT village right by the water behind the health lodge. It's a great campsite. Um, and it's just a really fun program. And especially for those scouts that have done a lot of the other programs and programs at camp and are looking for something new. Um, it's a great opportunity. Uh, additionally, something that um, has maybe fallen off in terms of awareness is that uh, a scout can be a CIT in a summer and come to camp with their troop as well. So you'll come to staff week in three other weeks that you choose, but then you know you can work that around when your troop is going to camp. So you can still go to camp with your troop and participate with the troop and do all the troop activities, uh, which is great to be able to do both things. Um, and when you're a CIT, you get to take first period merit badge and second period merit badge because we want scouts at that age who are 14 and 15 to continue working on their advancement. Um, so overall, remember it's first class, at least 14, not older than 15 um, by June of, of this year. So if anyone has any questions, they can email me cit at camponoxit.org and the application's available online. And in terms of junior staff positions, um, we still have a few openings and we would encourage um, eligible scouts adventurers to apply. Um, so they're being considered on a rolling basis, but we encourage people who are you know, at least 15 by camp to consider applying if, if they are interested for junior staff. Um, and we were, you know, are asking that you know, attending staff week, people be able to do that uh, at the end of June as well. All right, thank you, Adam. Uh, so the dates are, like we mentioned at the beginning, uh, let me back up for a second. For those of you who don't know me, uh, Andrew Collins, Assistant Camp Director, 
uh, all the all the operational side of things with Danny. Um, the dates this year are similar to previous years. However, July 4th is the start of week two. So uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier or a couple days ago, we sent out a, an email, a custom email to all of the current unit contacts. Uh, you should have received that. If you didn't receive that, please email us info at camponoxit.org. Um, that email contained the, the dates and the week number that we currently have for you for your reservation. Uh, with it being a shift in, in the weeks because of July 4th, um, we want to just make sure that everybody knows those dates ahead of time and that we don't have any, any challenges when, when the summertime comes. Uh, that, the, the link also asks a, a couple questions regarding, uh, you know, are there any changes to your, uh, your unit contact? Are there you know, address changes or is the person a totally different person? Um, as well as uh, roughly how many scouts do you think you're, you'll be bringing to camp? And this is completely non-binding. Uh, we're just looking for some information uh, to do some program planning. Uh, and we're just trying to see uh, how the units are doing as far as size compared to uh, earlier in 2020, uh, so that we can figure out roughly the, the number of, of people who are coming to camp. We have a, a waiting list of units who are looking to come to, to Winoxit. And so we're just trying to make sure we manage the size of camp. Um, the, the dates for uh, the camp is in the leader's guide. I believe it's on page four, along with the pre-camp meeting dates. Uh, at that meeting, we'll, and we'll talk about med forms in a little bit, uh, that's when you bring your med forms, you'll, you'll turn in a, a preliminary roster. Uh, we're going to be asking for a roster this year for a couple, couple reasons. Uh, will and the program group uh, to start putting together some cohorts, uh, as well as uh, some requirement changes that we're, we're investigating with the state of New Hampshire around uh, background checks and uh, the safety of our scouts for adults. Those Rosters can always be edited, but we need a preliminary one by your pre-camp meeting. Um, and we'll be when we when we get the final guidance from the state uh, around those background checks and about COVID, we'll be getting all that information to you as well. Andrew, uh, just a point on that: if a troop had an adult that might come to camp, we would recommend to put them on the list. If they don't come, at least we've done the background check, but they're cleared. But don't add them late. So correct. Yeah, I, yeah. Over over add adults. Um, we can always remove adults later. Uh, you can always call us up and uh, amend the roster as well. Uh, but yeah, round in favor if if you think someone is going to be coming to camp. All right. Uh, I know we did get a question about, uh, which I think Owen just sent me a message uh, privately uh, about pre camp meeting in person or virtual. Uh, we're looking to, to do in-person. Uh, internet coverage at Winoxit right now is not the best. Uh, it is scheduled to be upgraded, but I think we're going to try and do something virtual. But um, if you can't make it, uh, get us those med forms, get us those rosters, uh, get, those, get those to camp so the nurse can, can go over those. Did I get that right, Danny? Yes. All right. Um, medical forms, uh, which is towards the end of the leader's guide, standard Boy Scout medical form. Uh, that did change going into the 2020 season. So uh, for some of you, this, it was a minor, minor modification. It's the same, you know, four or five page form. It just looks a little different. A couple of things were, were tweaked. Um, so it's standard BSA medical form. As a reminder, it's, it's valid much like your car inspection sticker until the end of the 12th month. So if you have a scout who is, uh, you know, like myself, born in the middle in, in middle of July, and you can't get your your physical until after your birthday. Um, that physical is good until the end of the month, not necessarily uh, your birthday or whenever you had it. So uh, I know that we run into some challenges sometimes, especially with the units that have reservations around the beginning of a month, right, the beginning of the summer or in the middle of the summer when we get to August. Um, so it's good until the end of the 12th calendar month. Included with the medical form is a cover page that we've used for, I think, the last decade at this point, and it's, it's really useful for you as unit leaders uh, to share with parents, and it, it is a commonly list missed items on the medical form, right? Things like out-of-date tetanus, uh, missing signatures, it points out specific spots that you should, you as a leader, unit leader should double check, parents should double check before turning in those medical forms. There is a uh, immunization exemption process for the state of New Hampshire. Uh, we only run into this a couple times a year. 
Uh, if they, if a scout or a parent needs to be exempted from an immunization, uh, they should email us info at camponoxet.org. We'll get them the, the two pieces of paper they need completed uh, and we'll get them, get them, you know, in camp. State of New Hampshire does require an additional form for any scout who has an EpiPen, an auto injector of any sort, whether it's an EpiPen or a, I think it's AviQ is the other brand name that's out there, uh, or an inhaler. Uh, that form is only required if a scout has one of those two items. If they do not have one of those items, they do not need to submit that form. Uh, it's a one page form that the doctor does need to fill out. And it's, it's essentially doctor's orders, doctor's orders for the prescription kind of on steroids. It asks a lot more questions than a, a traditional uh, medication order. Um, so that is required if a scout has an inhaler or has an EpiPen. Um, and that's towards the end of the medical form as well. Some of the, the major things that are usually always missed, again, things that should be, uh, you know, keep an eye out for. Uh, there's a signature for over-the-counter medication. Uh, if a scout needs, you know, Tylenol or ibuprofen or anything like that, uh, there's a signature line for the parent to sign. Uh, if they don't sign it, we can always get verbal authorization over the phone, but it, it can slow down a little bit. Um, attaching a complete immunization record. This is mostly for the scouts. Uh, you know, the scouts typically have a full immunization record because their pediatrician is still around. Uh, for adults, uh, we, can, we can work with you on that if you don't have uh, access to your pediatrician's uh, immunization record, but uh, try to include as complete a copy as possible. And then obviously tetanus being out of date. And uh, I think in, in talking with some of our nurses, this might be one of the things that is gonna be overlooked a lot this year with a lot of us not getting to the doctor in 2020 uh, for our annual physicals. So uh, remind your scouts about that. All right, camp registration. We're getting into some of the, the details on, on how to register for camp. So this year, the camp fee is 435 prior to May, or on or before May 1st. That's our early bird date, 435. Um, after that, the regular rate is 465. The rate table is in the leader's guide on page four. If a scout comes into your unit after early bird, we honor that early bird rate up until the time they come to camp. So if you have a weed loss crossover or a new member to your trooper crew, um, get them to camp, right? Camp is an experience that every kid should experience once a summer. Um, and I think after the last year, we all need camp uh, for at least a week. We also have our provisional program. And if a scout comes back a second week, even if it's letting us know, you know, that week they want it to come up, we give them the, the encore rate as well. When it comes to adult leaders, uh, we have uh, up to 20 scouts. Two adult are included in the camp fees for all the scouts. Uh, after 20 scouts, every 10 or part thereof, it goes up by one. That's included free with the troop registration. If you wanna bring additional adults, it's $100 for a full week adult leader. That really just covers the cost of food for the week. Uh, if they can't make it for the full week and they're, they're coming up for a partial week, it's uh, $6 a meal, but usually what we'll do during check-in is we'll kind of look at the whole adult roster and we'll see, you know, we've got one adult coming in Sunday to Wednesday and another adult kind of tagging out and replacing Wednesday to Saturday. We'll count that as one adult for financial purposes. They need to be listed on the roster for the background check. Uh, and so we have a full accounting of who is in camp, but financially, we're not really in the, in the, in the world of nickel and diming everybody. Uh, we want to just you know, be able to cover the cost of food. Uh, camper ships, you want to do this one, Danny, or you want me to? Sure. Camper ships uh, by April 1st. And if you have any type of trouble getting the information or the answer you need from council, let us know. Uh, I know Andrew has sat on the camper ship committee in the past. We want to make sure that every scout uh, who wants to go to camp can go to camp. And so we will find a way, uh, we'll work with the troop to find the money to get the scout to camp, but we don't wanna leave anyone behind. So by April 1st, with, with as much information, information as possible that the family will provide, but um, let's get the scout to camp. Keep me in the loop. If you have a problem, I wanna help fix it. So 
some tips when it comes to registration uh, for your unit. Uh, make sure that you have one person designated for your unit as that summer camp coordinator. In an ideal world, it's someone who's coming to camp. Uh, we, we've had uh, in the past a camp coordinator who comes to this meeting, gets the leader's guide, uh, does all the legwork as far as payment and rosters and stuff, uh, comes to camp, checks them in, and then uh, gets back in the truck and, and heads out of camp and leaves other adults uh, to be with the scouts for the week. Um, we really want to make sure that it's at least someone who's going to be in camp, if not for the whole week, at least part of the week. Uh, and be sure to share that leader's guide with other adults who are coming to camp. Uh, it's a pretty hefty document. It's half program, half, half operations. Uh, but the more adults who are coming to camp can take a look at that, the better. Um, as I mentioned, that verification, normally we would do in, a, in a, the in-person meeting, we'd verify on a piece of paper. We'd ask before you leave uh, for you to verify that contact. Please verify that using the form that we sent out on Friday. And if you did not receive it, email us info at camponoxet.org and we'll, we'll get that to you. Uh, when it comes to payment, uh, we want to make sure that the unit is the one who's paying the council office. Uh, around Early Bird, we've got between uh, the two camps in Harden, New England, we've got about 150 units that are registering for camp. Uh, and if, if every family was to send in a check to the council office, I think uh, the folks in Rutland would uh, probably just close the door and walk away for a day. Uh, so make sure that you are sending in one check that the individual families are paying the unit and the unit is sending in a check to Rutland. Uh, that address did change uh, and we'll get to that in just a second. Um, if there are any refunds, those refunds go back to the unit. Uh, the, the camp and the council work directly with the unit, not with each individual family. So where this most often comes into play, uh, early bird comes, you register 20 scouts. Included in that count of 20 is Timmy. A couple of weeks later, Timmy's family realizes there's a conflict with vacation or something else is going on. They can't go to camp anymore. Uh, and then the next day, Johnny says, I'm going to go to camp. And he was not included in the first 20. As far as we're concerned, you've paid for 20 scouts. You had to swap one for one. You and the unit can take care of refunding the first family. The other family pays you and everyone's happy. Um, what we don't want to get into is a refund request. We send you a refund and then you send us another check right away. Uh, that kind of muddies the waters a little bit. Uh, at the very end of the leader's guide, literally the last page is the unit financial submission form. Uh, in, the, in the printed days of the leader's guide, it's designed to tear off and send in with your check. And you can send in multiple checks over the course of the season. Um, but again, they all come from the unit. Uh, that's just really, we really, really, really ask that if the unit could use that when they send in checks, uh, it just helps organize when the checks come in that we make sure that they get allocated to the right unit, to the right camp, and that you're paying for exactly what you think you should be paying for. Um, I mentioned earlier, Will, could you actually go to the next slide? I think it's on the next slide. Uh, I mentioned earlier the council office has relocated. Um, so on or before June 15th, you wanna send all of your correspondence, all of your mail, your checks, send that to the council service center in Rutland. Uh, attention Kelly Stickney, Kelly is the, the programming assistant. So send her all of the, the checks when it comes to uh, early bird up until June 15th. June 15th is gonna come and uh, we're gonna be packing up our classrooms. We're also gonna be packing up the, the financial documents and, and everything else and bringing it to Dublin. So after June 15th, you're gonna send that to the camp office in Dublin. And both of those addresses are at the bottom of that form uh, at the last page of the, of the uh, leader's guide. Um, we will have, as we have in years past, the ability to turn in a roster and Meripad is electronically. I know that's something that a lot of units have, have enjoyed using. Uh, that's not the only way that you can turn it in, but that is one way that you can turn it in. We'll have those templates up on the, account, on the uh, camp website uh, probably early March, uh, now that we have a finalized Meripad grid from Will and his team. Um, and you can use that and, and share those with us. Uh, the key is uh, just make sure you're in communication with us. If any, any changes ma are made, it's a Google sheet, so you can make changes and we'll get notified automatically. Uh, and if that's not the way that you, uh, you're looking to submit your roster and your merit badges, that's fine. We'll take them however, whatever the most convenient thing is for you, whether it's uh, a thumb drive you give us at the pre-camp meeting or an email or a physical piece of paper or whatever the, the case may be. 
Um, and again, uh, make sure you're sending someone to that pre-camp meeting to turn in those med forms. If you cannot make it to that pre-camp meeting, uh, make sure you get those medical forms to the camp office uh, as soon as possible. The camp nurse does go, go through them and look for any of the challenges uh, and communicate those, those back to you. So we don't wanna inundate them you know, Wednesday or Thursday before your arrival, because then that just is confusing when it comes to getting those challenges rectified. And as always, copies of medical forms, because we keep them for a certain number of years. Thank you, Danny. I forgot about that. Yeah, copies. All right, I'll pass it over to Owen. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Owen. I've worked at camp a few years now, and I'm really excited to come back this year as the communications director. Um, as Andy was talking about a little bit before, if um, you want any of us to come into your unit meetings um, sometime this spring to talk about camp and really all the really exciting things that are we have planned this year and, you know, talk to parents, talk to uncertain scouts, uh, feel free to reach out and send us an email. Uh, we'd, we'd love to either come into a Zoom or um, if folks are in person later on in the year or something like that, uh, we can really make sure that happens. We can also bring uh, some of our awesome senior staff along too. Uh, before, be sure to check us out on uh, social media, of course, uh, plugging that. Um, follow us now and until camp and of course throughout the summer as well. So you not only can kind of remember the memories that um, happen during your week, but also see what's going on at camp when you're not there um, to kind of get excited uh, throughout the spring and the summer. And continue to send your questions in the chat uh, to me if you have any tonight. I have a good list going um, and we'd love to answer all of them. All right. Uh, Will, you want to go back to the email list? Leave those on the screen for a second. Yep. Yeah, sorry about that. No worries. No worries. Uh, let's maybe start with some of the questions, Owen. I'm sure you get a lot of them, right? Oh, yeah. Well, we'll start with um, kind of the big one that might be on everyone's minds. Um, if one of you could talk maybe a little bit about COVID precautions, um, that being like the dining hall as well as um, tent and campsite things as well. All right, I'll take that one. So let's just roll back the clock to last year. Last year, we put together a team to try to run camp. And we spent some serious time on putting together a plan. And we worked with the state. And on a Wednesday afternoon, they said, you got it. You've done everything we've asked. I want to send my kid to your camp. I wish he was a scout. Um, and then that Thursday, they came up with the idea of three tests per scout. And that was you know, what kind of broke the dam and caused us to not be able to have camp. Once again, we're going through the standards. It's a draft right now of what New Hampshire wants us to do. So eating by cohort, staying in campsites by cohort, programs by cohort to uh, the greatest extent possible. But we also understand that social distancing will be involved. So we'll have to spread out in the different badges. But we believe we can run camp with the guidelines uh, with New Hampshire. We, we think adults who enter camp will, will have had a vaccine by that time. That's our goal. We'll wear masks when we're not in the campsites. Um, we will, how we get the food, I'm not sure about yet. We're, we have met with the food service. Uh, we're going through the guidelines. There's a modified family style where adults help serve the food, possibly cafeteria style, which um, I don't know about but we will we'll, we'll take the guidelines uh, from the directors of, uh, you know, that's our area of expertise. So we're looking at all of those areas and it's gonna be a family decision whether they wanna send their scout to camp this year. And, and I understand that, but um, we're gonna minimal, uh, minimize how much the staff moves around. The staff will have to understand that when they go home, yes, they can see their family, but they're gonna have some guidelines about what they need to do to make sure that when they return to camp, that they're not bringing it with them uh, back into camp. And, and um, we're in uncharted territory. I'm gonna take this window to tell you the one thing that I'm a little bit concerned about. For, for 10 years, I've, I've come to these meetings and I've told you that you're gonna get every single merit badge that you want. We'll help make sure that every scout gets their first choice for every single merit badge. And some troops, they, they say, well, wait a minute, is that really possible? And then they come to camp and we, we crush it and we, we get them every badge they want in their first choice. We may change their schedule, but we, we, we fulfilled that promise year in and year out. I don't know how that will work this year. I don't want to make that promise. I want to do it, but I don't know how we're going to do it. So I guess I'm asking for flexibility around the scheduling of program. And I'm asking for you to look at Winoxit in a different way. 
how we have done things in the past will not be how we'll have to do it this year. A normal lunch is uh, uh, 350 people uh, singing and cheering and chanting in the dining hall. I don't think that will fit with the COVID policy in 2021. In fact, I know it won't. And so there'll be changes, but we'll also be creative. I mean, there'll be times on the field when we're with our cohorts and we're lowering the flag. Maybe that's an opportunity where we sing songs and we, we do things differently. Um, Will has already talked about campfires and all of his ideas about how we can have a campfire with certain numbers and with certain guidelines. So there are things that we are thinking about at all levels of the program and operations. That was a long answer to your question. We are working with the state to make sure that we follow all their guidelines, uh, temperature checks, mask, social distancing. Uh, we may have to go to one scout per tent. We're not there yet. Uh, the early response from uh, New Hampshire was maybe uh, uh, no, but um, if a troop wants to do that, then that's something we'll support too. We'll support the individual units and in what they want to do. So let's move on to the next one and see if I covered that one and we get more on that. Awesome. Uh, and for the Wednesday night barbecue um, that normally families would come into camp uh, for the evening, um, how will that work? Um, is it still in the plan? It is not in the plan right now. We, we um, just like last week, we admitted to talk about that and someone added the question. Someone was really good to have that one. Thank you for fixing that mistake. Right now, uh, it's not a recommendation of the state of New Hampshire to bring 200 parents into camp midweek and mix it all up. <laughs> and so Will is crafting the program so that Wednesday night is exciting, but it does not involve bringing in 200 parents and um, friends of staff members. And so, Will, do you want to take that for, for 30 seconds? Yeah, um, we are, <clears throat> we still plan to have our barbecue. You know, I love the idea of this midweek break where the meal's a little different. We're not all in the dining hall. Um, not that we probably will be anyway this year, but I love this idea of, keeping the barbecue and maybe coupling it with an OA ice cream social, something unique and fun on Wednesdays where we can be like, this is camp on a Wednesday. Um, we're talking about games, we're talking about competitions, um, but I also don't wanna lose, uh, I love our family night. So I don't wanna put something in on Wednesday that next year maybe we can't meld with a new modified family night. So I'm working on it um, and it's gonna be different. It's gonna be new. Um, that's all I have right now because I am still waiting on that, those guidelines from the state. Yeah. Let's go to the chat. Let's keep, keep the questions rolling. I know it's a Sunday night. We wanna get through all the questions. Awesome. And if camp is canceled, uh, will there be refunds? Yes. Yeah, awesome. we're not looking to keep anyone's money. Uh, we'll do a better job than last summer. I know last summer, we had a guideline from the executive director to hold checks for a certain number of days and I was irate over it and eventually they came out, but we'll get them out as quickly as possible and we're not looking to hold any money. Um, we'll also keep you in the loop as quickly as we know, but we believe from our contacts with the state and what we're understanding is that it's going to be a go, uh, that we're going to run a camp this summer at Winoxit on schedule. Uh, we, we believe it. Um, I, I, I feel much more confident than I did last year. And um, I mean, uh, let's roll that next one. Awesome. And, um, you know, if a unit leader has uh, a parent that is maybe uncertain, uh, should they go about encouraging or discouraging them? Or how would you kind of present uh, that situation? What would you tell them? That's a great question. Um, I can't, I don't want a strong arm parent into sending a kid to camp. Um, if, you, if you have a parent that needs to talk to, to me, and you want me to uh, answer their questions, I can do that. If you want them to meet with uh, or talk with our nurse as camp comes closer, we'll answer the questions. We'll provide the information. I want lots of scouts at camp, but I don't want to strong arm parents. But uh, if they have the knowledge about what we're planning on doing, um, I think they will want them to be at camp. So we're available to help answer questions, but it's a parent's decision. I also would recommend the troops to not, um, not push them, but guide them with the proper information. Awesome. Um, how does camp handle peanut and nut allergies? Um, we have several scouts each year that come up uh, as having a nut allergy. And depending on the type of allergy, we have had um, a table 
uh, for that troop where they are no nuts at that table. We've had separate um, separate areas, separate cooking, separate food. We've done everything on the spectrum up to the point of having a separate microwave where the scout cooked their own food that the family provided. So it's from one to 15 on the level of um, peanut allergy and anxiety behind it, but we'll, we'll do whatever it takes to get that scout to camp. Um, but I've, I've, we've done and seen it all in the area of nut allergy. Yeah, um, there's a lot of troops that are linked uh, with a girl's troop and a boy's troop. Um, is there a possibility for those troops to kind of piggyback off of each other um, and maybe work in the same site or close to each other? Absolutely. There are no restrictions about uh, different units staying in the same site. You do need to have the proper adult coverage for each unit. And Collins is a master of understanding every single detail about that. But as long as you have the proper adults, there's no problems with the sites. And when it comes to that, uh, we do want to make sure that we're, we have that unit on, on the books from a registration perspective. Uh, we need to report every year uh, the number of units, the number of kids, boys, girls, uh, that come to camp. So if you do have a linked unit with your troop, uh, you know, and that's one of the questions in that survey that we sent out on Friday, uh, let us know that. Uh, we, can, we can plan ahead. If you're operating kind of as, you know, two units that are linked together with the same charter org and your you're kind of brother-sister troop, uh, we, won't, we won't put in a, a site deposit for that kind of stuff, uh, I believe. Um, but, you know, we need to know that information ahead of time so we don't overbook the camp and we can report it. Awesome. Um, Collins, where can people find the medical form and the like inhaler uh, forms as well? Sure. So uh, right now it is the very, very end of the leader's guide. Uh, it is, as I scroll down to it, it's the last uh, like seven or eight pages. It starts on page 35. I'll drop the link in the chat in case you don't have it. Uh, we are working on getting the separate medical form document up on the website. Uh, you could go up and download it right now. It's, it's last year's version, which it didn't change last year to this year. It'll just say 2020 on the cover page instead of 2021, so. Awesome. Uh, Will, here's a question for you. Uh, will the shooting ranges, rifle and shotgun, be open? Yes. Yes. Awesome. Um, it was for Will, Danny. Yeah, thank you, Will. <laughs> uh, here, Danny, here's one for you. Um, How generous will, Will the vaccine be required for staff or volunteers um, or also youth if, if that is authorized? So right now it's only 16 plus, uh, but uh, 16 year olds are at the bottom of the list. Uh, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, my instinct is yes, uh, but that's just my instinct, which is pretty good, but I don't know yet. Um, you know, they're saying, you know, December, until we are all vaccinated. So if we're not, if we're waiting till December, camp is before December, well, that would go against my instinct. But um, if at all possible, get your vaccine and have it on the sheet. Um, but I don't know the answer to that one, but my instinct is yes. Awesome. Uh, and, will and to follow up on that too, uh, sorry, Owen, to follow up on that no. too, I think one of the conversations we've been having is we're gonna really severely limit the number of visitors, not necessarily for units, but you know, outside visitors into camp during the week, so. Great. Uh, will there be any leeway with medical forms, uh, knowing that some scouts haven't been able to, you know, visit their uh, healthcare providers because of restrictions? Yes, uh, but that's unofficial. The, the uh, I mean, if, <laughs> if you're asking me to, to give an extra month on a medical form with a scout who has a seizure disorder and has a whole bunch of different medications, the wiggle room that the nurse is going to give us is is really not, you know, is not there. If you have a scout that there's an appointment scheduled for August and, um, and it, they've gone 13 months or whatever it is, there's, there is wiggle room, but you know, we, we got to be really careful. Um, there was a memo from the scouts Collins room. I dreaming this up last year that because of um, the pandemic last summer, there was going to be a little bit of wiggle room unofficially because of the medical appointments. And this has been now a year later of the crazy world that we live in. And so, yes, there'll be wiggle room, but um, those scouts who have uh, medical conditions where they need to be visited the doctor on a regular basis, their stuff needs to be wired pretty tight. Yeah, the, 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 the memo that Danny mentioned was, was for last summer. I believe it did end uh, in the end of October, and it was only for summer camp. Um, it is also important to remember that 
the, the physical does not necessarily need to be the doctor or the pediatrician, right? It can be, if I recall, I, I'm speaking on the very backside of my knowledge right now, but I think it can also be a physician's assistant. Um, you can also go to a CVS or a, 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 I forget the, the other, the other uh, yeah. brand, but, you know, one of the other, yeah. yeah. I mean, you need uh, so to drive by physical nowadays, folks. They just want your money yeah. uh, as long as you're uh, rolling and through. And the other thing too, I know, you know, at least in the school I'm teaching in, you know, some sports are happening. And so you can take a sports physical, staple it to the Boy Scout physical. You do have to fill out parts A and B as a parent, you know, maybe get some signatures as far as medications. But if you've already got a doctor physical in the last 12 months, staple that thing to the Boy Scout form and, and let's call it a day. Yeah. yeah. We're, and there's we're, been a, we're looking to work with you. Collins, you yeah. drove that point home. Awesome. You stapled yeah. the form from the sports physical. You staple what you had. Your last visit to the doctor with your immunization. Staple it. Do the best you can. Have the parents fill out their form. We'll work with you. Let's make sure the date's on it. There's one pediatrician near 495 that does not put the date or the signature on the electronic form. Awesome. Um, an explosion of telemedicine, too. So always consider a telemedicine visit. Mm -hmm. uh, just a reminder, everyone, the presentation will be sent out uh, after this meeting. We're recording this as well as uh, we can send out the PowerPoint, too. Um, so we have all of that for you if um, other unit leaders might not have access or um, other you know, summer camp coordinators aren't here tonight. Um, oh, and, oh, and I see Mr. Geary in the room. Tell me you have more questions for us uh, besides. No, I, we, I have I have two more questions right now, but uh, if people want to keep sending their questions. I would love them. Um, there was one question. Uh, one troop is having uh, challenges um, with rechartering because of short staff at the office. Um, how can troops ensure that adults that should be in their charter have appropriate uh, registration and background uh, kind of complete? I'm going to have Mr. to put Collins? that. Yeah, Collins. Uh... I, uh, I would say um, it's February 21st and camp starts in June. Uh, so let's work through those challenges sooner than later. Uh, if there's a challenge, email me. Uh, I, can, I can try to get some wiggle room. Uh, I will tell you that if it, I assume, Owen, it's probably a harder New England unit. Um, the, the office was moved uh, and those folks are still getting settled in Rutland. Um, and they're doing a fine job. They're just, it's an office move. They're, they're still acclimating to their new, new environment. So uh, if you're having a challenge, email me. Um, but yeah. Do me a favor. If you're having trouble getting your troop chartered, see, see me on that one too. I'd love to have that one in my inbox. So uh, you just, just uh, for the heck of it. What else, um, Jack Master? Um, this one's for Will. Will, is there any possibility if a unit wants to have maybe a brief virtual family night uh, with their families back um, in their hometowns, is that a possibility on Wednesday evening? If they bring Let's their own see what the internet is doing at camp in the summer. We yeah, could, there's a possibility yeah. we have better internet. If we have better internet, we're willing to share it. But right now, we have a copper line that comes up from Jaffrey, and um, there's a promise of a new, a new uh, files line, but it's not there yet. Mm -hmm. um, here's one for Collins. Um, how are you handling Massachusetts troops into New Hampshire? Um, I assume that must be related to like some of the travel travel orders from the governor. Yeah. Um, so I think I'll speak for Danny and I. I think we're we're anticipating as the numbers are going down that, that travel order will start to relax. We've already seen it to relax. Uh, I think last week you could you could come and go to South Dakota and Puerto Rico uh, without any challenges. So if anyone's looking to go get uh, some nice weather, go down there. Um, I would I would assume that, that that's going to get relaxed uh, by the time we get to summer camp. Uh, right now, going into New Hampshire is perfectly fine, uh, as long as you're from New England. Um, it's the coming back that is the questionable one, uh, but I would assume that that will be relaxed by then. Awesome. Um, how is there still plans to have Provo? How will um, that be adjusted? Good question. So exciting. For the first time in the history of camp, we have two 21-year-olds of um, a female 21-year-old and a male 21-year-old in Provo. So this opens up scouts, um, boys and girls. Uh, I don't know how the housing will be accommodated. I don't know um, exactly where we need more space, but all of that isn't thought about. So whether it's you know three scouts to a cabin or four, not eight, I'm sure. Uh, whether we go to tents, I don't know. 
but we're thinking about where they're sleeping and we're thinking about the restroom facilities. But the good news is we have two adults, male and female, to head up the Provo. Um, so in the event that um, we have uh, female scouts who want to come Provo, um, we have the proper adults. Awesome. And we know um, that, you know, the dining hall situation is still up in the air, depending on health guidelines. Uh, but if a troop maybe feels more comfortable, is there opportunities for them to cook in sight all of their meals? Yes. Right now, we believe that if you wanted to either bring your own meal and pay a lesser fee for camp, or I see Colin's rolling his eyes on that one, uh, uh, or you... Um, you pay the regular fee and we allocate the food for you and we work with you on a menu, there are options if you want to cook in your site. In normal years, I would say you're crazy. Uh, but if you're taking the pressure off the dining hall this year, I might be uh, happy and willing to work with you. Uh, so <laughs> there is, um, there is uh, you might be crazy and I'm still willing to work with you, but our chow is pretty good. Um, a little bit of a window here. There are rumors of other camps in New England that are not opening, and I do not want to overfill Winoxit. And I already believe that probably weeks two and three are pretty snug, but there are other weeks that um, there is space available. So if you know of troops that are looking for a camp, even if it's one year, um, or maybe it's more than one year, you can eventually share this meeting with them. But we are going to have space in weeks one, four, five, six, and seven. And we would love to add some new folks to the Winoxid family, um, even if it's just 2021. But um, that was my plug. Uh, let's keep going, Owen. Awesome job. Just for clarification, uh, we have a little bit more confusion still about the pre-camp meeting. The can, Collins, can you verify, even though the family night is, um, will not be happening this year, folks will be coming in person on Wednesday evening uh, for that fam, uh, for that pre-camp meeting? Yes, yeah, even, even though we're not having traditional family night, uh, we're gonna be looking to do the pre-camp meeting. We'll keep those visitors separate to the boathouse. We'll, we can feed you, um, but that'll be in person. And, and like Danny said, hopefully if the upgrade goes well, then we'll be able to, for those folks who, either are far away or uh, just aren't comfortable coming up uh, because they're the coordinator and they're not actually coming to camp themselves, we'll work to get that out online as well. And, and remember, part of that is that we often will have four registered nurses in camp the night of Wednesday to review medical forms. Um, if we get a chance, I'd love to go back and show the senior staff slide uh, the, the image with the staff. Uh, it, it does a nice job showing you know, the depth Basically, with the exception of two nurses, every nurse for the last 10 years is still involved in camp and still helping out on a uh, part-time basis. The, when we hire a nurse who's a new grad, um, they with us. And so um, that's part of the reason. I mean, when you get down to our, our medical division, I mean, it's an incredible group of, of um, both men and women who have worked at camp and still help out. And so Wednesdays are about checking medical forms. Let's keep that up for a minute. Oh, and let's go with another question. Uh, besides that Google form that was just sent out, uh, is there anything needed um, in the next few weeks from unit leadership currently? No, I, I just want to make sure that the troops know that the week they're coming to camp with the proper dates and that they're thinking about making sure that the scouts know that we're looking to run camp and they start talking up camp because I know that the troops may be meeting virtually. Uh, but I want to make sure that families are starting to think about returning to the shores of the Thorndike for 2021 and putting this on their calendar. I, I think the scouts, um, I think they need this. I think six days at camp is going to be a great thing for them in 2021. And so um, drum up um, the feelings for Winoxit and make sure you, that you know what week you're coming and shoot us emails and give us some patience because we're getting lots of emails every day but we want to answer your questions. We want to work with you. We want to support you as, as we get closer to June. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And um, although COVID restrictions haven't been finalized yet and changes like that um, are still up in the air, is there a place that people can go to find all of those updates, um, either the website or maybe an updated leader's guide? So there will be a document. There'll be a document that we have already started working on with COVID guidelines. Um, we do not want to roll that out tonight. It's not complete because we're working off a draft set from New Hampshire. So as we put together our guidelines, 
If someone wants to troll into the New Hampshire um, draft, you can Google it. Uh, guy, uh, Collins, give us something they could Google. Draft guidelines for a residential uh, camp. Yeah, I believe it's the New Hampshire Reopen Task Force, Economic Reopen Task Force. Yeah, and it's There's some uh, phenomenal green, uh, public yellow, meetings you can sit in on. Yeah, green, yellow, and red font, and you have to shift back and forth. It's a lot of fun. So. <laughs> The, those guidelines we're hoping uh, in, in hearing from that we have a contact up in the governor's office we're hoping we're hearing that that should be updated at least published hopefully by the beginning of March not sure when that's going to be they uh, if there's any West Wing fans in the room they like, they like to take it out with the trash on Friday at four o'clock and then shut their email off um, so we'll uh, we'll be keeping an eye out for those as soon as we get those guidelines we'll be updating that document getting it out to everybody and I believe you know uh, Danny Will and I have been kicking around the idea of, of maybe we have another one of these shorter meetings with some of the COVID specific things as we get closer to the summer. Um, probably not gonna be in March or April because I think as we all know, things are things are still changing by the day. So, um, so yeah. And we might be able to bring some of our medical staff with us to that meeting. So there could be specific questions for medical staff and yeah. um, key players in the room. And I'll be updating the program parts that are affected as well as those guidelines come out. Uh, I'm just, if there's can be some patience because there'll be a lot of things to think about in terms of cohort sizes. It's one of the reasons why we're asking for those rosters 10 days early now so that we can really start to plan on that. Um, so just when you do get those guys, when the guidelines become not a draft and become permanent, uh, Get, a week would be nice. <laughs> awesome. Two uh, kind of quick questions. Um, first being, uh, how will the shower houses work this year? Um, the shower houses, last year there was going to be an outside vendor coming in. I'm not sure if that's the direction we'll go in, but I think there probably will be um, some level of outside companies that come in to do some serious penetration cleaning um, and we'll have adults cleaning it on staff. And um, they're, remember, they're individual stalls. There's, and so they're individual, 16 individual stalls. They'll be cleaned on a regular basis and probably an outside vendor. So we can at least put on writing that we have an outside vendor coming through and blasting the heck out of it uh, at some point. And so um, it's on our radar. It's on our list. It was on our plan last June. Um, it'll be sanitized. It'll be cleaned. It'll be cleaned by adults. Awesome. And uh, will care packages still be available? Yes. Yes, absolutely. No. Um, here is one that just came in. Uh, can uh, unit leaders, as they're talking with parents before camp, uh, can they promise refunds if parents aren't happy with the COVID situation at maybe the last minute? Yes. Awesome. Yeah, and yeah. will the Colin, trading... Colin, do you agree with that? Right? I'm not... Colin, do you wholeheartedly agree with that? If a parent is concerned about the health and safety of their child at summer camp, I, I can't see... Any reason why we would hold their money? Yeah. I'll follow up and I'll get the council president to understand that question and agree to it um, at a meeting later this week. Uh, but yeah, we're not we're not looking to keep anyone's money or to charge a fee and to, to do things. You know, we're in the we're looking to have over a thousand scouts even during a pandemic at Winoxa this summer. We're not looking to to that's just not who we are. Awesome. And will the trading post be open? Yes. Yes. Um, whether it's through a window or through a different type of method or it's for a certain number of customers in the store, um, there are valuable things in there that those scouts need. And we want to provide a service for the adult leader to have their ice cream on the front porch. Uh, we, you know, these are the things that um, remind us why we go to camp and hanging out and having a snack. And yes, we'll find a way. Um, I, yeah. Uh, well, Danny just said we will find a way. And I think that can be just like a motto for a lot of your program questions and a lot of like, we will, we will find it out. I think most of you know us well enough by now. Danny's been at camp for 30 years. Andy, Adam and I, 15. We will, we will find a way. Mm -hmm. Will, here is a good question for you. Um, will there be any kind of changes to the waterfront? How will that instruct, uh, how will that impact programs? Yeah, um, it's a really good question um, about, you know, boat sanitization, mask wearing. Obviously, it's the one place we really can't do it. Um, you know, if you're getting swimming merit badges, 
or any badge really in the water. Um, so it's another one of the reasons why as I come back to you guys throughout the spring, I might say, you know, if there's a way for you to have a whole patrol, or if there's a whole patrol or group of scouts in your unit, they can act as a cohort and essentially fill a class of swimming or sailing or kayaking. That would be really desirable for us because it'll allow us to keep that cohort together so that we're not, uh, the social distancing requirements stay the same without putting too much pressure on our staff. Because uh, social distancing is also hard to do at the waterfront because you need a lifeguard. You need people you also just need a buddy. nearby. You need a buddy near you. I mean, it, it, what we're thinking about folks is that before you arrive to camp, you'll probably be tested for COVID and you'll arrive at camp and you'll have tested negative. And then you will use your mask and you will social distance whenever possible, but you will swim and eat, we'll burn campfires and we will have flag ceremonies and we will have skills and we will uh, deal with those symptoms and we will get them to the health lodge and get them home and get them tested. And if they're negative, they'll return. And if they have to come back later in the summer, we'll refund them or reschedule them. It's whack-a-mole and things will pop up and we will hit the challenge and we will whack them all. Um, but you know, from somebody who was married to a high school swim coach who did not know that we were going to have a full season this year, we had one, you know, we had a full swim uh, season with kids in the pool swimming without their mask and they competed and they swam and it was very different than in the past, but it happened. And so I kind of think that's what we're going to do. We're going to come up with clever ways to have patrol swims and patrol boats and there'll be activities. I don't believe the merit badges will only be by troop. I don't think it's physical or possible. I think it's going to be social distancing with other scouts, but we'll try to have cohorts of all the scouts from, you know, units, but not going to be possible for everything. So they will be stretching out. Maybe there'll be people sitting you know, with some distance around them. Will, you talked last week very briefly about cooking merit badge where everyone takes the badge, but you do, the cooking portion in your site with your own cohort. And that was a really good description of a modification that you came up with with your folks, um, where the badge is taught at Scoutcraft, but the cooking portion is done with all folks who are from your own individual unit. And so within the guidelines. And so there's a whole bunch of creative ways that um, we can we can make this happen. Uh, Let's uh, um, more going, we're getting good here tonight. Yeah, um, Collins, uh, if a sister troop is in the same site as their linked uh, brother troop, uh, can they do they can they still have two leaders as long as one is female, or will they need a, four leaders? Uh, believe, technically, they need separate leadership. Um, although, if we run into a challenge one evening where you know you're you're down to three people in the campsite, uh, you know two and one or something like that. Uh, we can make that work just like we would with any other unit. If if a unit is suddenly without a leader, where we ask a nearby campsite to keep an eye on that on that unit. So uh, technically, to follow uh, the guide to safe scouting, they need two over twenty one adult leaders. And if it is a unit that has uh, any female scouts, they need to have at least one of those be a female leader. So, Collins, if I'm hearing that, is the real number they need three or four? The real number is four, because uh, again, they're operating technically on the books as two separate unit or yeah, two separate units, and every unit needs two adult leaders that are over the age of 21. Uh, but just like if if a troop in Apache was down a leader, we could ask the troop in Rotary to keep an eye on that unit overnight. During the day, it's not as big of a deal because the kids are out in program, right? We we all have eyes on them as staff, as adult leaders, uh, so. Awesome and. Um... I would say there's no wiggle room on the gender. Correct. Correct. Um, two more quick questions, and then I think we will probably wrap it up. So if anyone has any other questions, uh, we'll put the email you can reach out to in the chat. Um, but the first one being, uh, will swim tests still happen upon arrival on Sunday? Probably yes. Maybe in a different schedule, but um, that is a really important part to camp. Now, if a troop comes to camp and they have swim tests that are done at the pool at Blue Hills and they, it's signed off by the proper person, we're willing to take that. But um, it's going to be really tight uh, and we prefer to have our own test. Um, and it's also a great way to get in the water and do something besides setting up camp and sitting in a car and sitting in the parking lot. You get wet, 
you get a little taste of the thorn dike. It cleanses you after being away for two years. Uh, you really prefer to do our own swim test. But if you have something going on, talk to uh, us in advance and we can talk about it. Awesome. And the final question, I'll send this over to Will. Um, will there still be open program optional merit badges? You're, you're muted, Will. There you go. Thank you. Uh, sorry, guys, my internet dropped off, so I'm on my phone now. Um, yes, we will still uh, have open program merit badges. Um, that being said, like I was speaking about with swimming a moment ago, if there's a way for us to find that we can send, you know, larger segments of your unit to those badges and then schedule them individually, that is something I'm absolutely looking to do. So rather than the 40 kids who show up to, for fingerprinting randomly, um, I'll prop my will most likely be looking to schedule those throughout the week on a troop by troop or unit by unit basis. Um, so they'll be available, they'll be there, we're planning on it. We're planning virtual field trips for fire safety rather than an in-person field trip. We have all these really great plans for, the, for those badges. Uh, we just got to talk about how we deliver them and whether it's mm -hmm. scheduling in advance, uh, I think is gonna be a big part of it. And I did get one last question, Owen, uh, that was sent to me. Uh, the question was, is a COVID test mm -hmm. gonna be required to be at camp? Um, I think that's one of those things that is, there's draft guidance, but that has not been approved yet. Uh, and I, if I can speak for Danny, Will and myself, that was the area of the guidelines last year that uh, was kind of the end of us trying to get camp to happen. Uh, so. I, I'm hopeful, uh, you know, someone who's, who's been tested many number of times at this point um, uh, for any number of reasons, um, you know, you can get a test now. It's really, it's really easy, especially in Massachusetts. Uh, I got one a couple, literally three or four days ago, and it was scheduled at 8 a.m. and I was there by noon. Um, so uh, I don't think uh, we want to put a definite yes or no on that right now, but as soon as we know, we'll let you know. Two things, uh, I'd like to thank Rachel, uh, incredible staff member, director at Split Rock, Clyde and Cope Master, um, and Owen for the chat and all your work with communications uh, and, and our CIT director, the professor Adam Morse. I wanna thank you three for spending the night with us. Um, I know it's, uh, it's a late night for you here. All the adults who are with us, awesome. Um, this is our second meeting, the first one, I think we had over 17 tonight, we're up near 40. Um, I I think we are gonna have a COVID test. I think it's a requirement. I'm hoping that the guideline that talks about one COVID test before your arrival at camp, I hope that's where the state of New Hampshire lands. I think that's doable. So we come into camp with a good feeling that we're negative and we roll through an awesome week of program with limited folks coming into camp. And we clean the place on Saturday, we send you home, we do it again on Sunday. And um, the positivity rate right now in Massachusetts is down to two nine, we're moving in the right direction. I'm optimistic that we are going to have an incredible summer at Winoxit and we will put this behind us. So um, anything else, Collins, any questions? Owen? No, um, no. If you do have questions, email us, info at campwinoxit.org. Uh, Owen and I drop that in the chat. Uh, send that. That goes to Danny, Will, myself. And um, I, you know, I wish I could read your minds, but uh, you know, I'm looking at a screen with a bunch of folks with their cameras on. Give me a thumbs up if you're feeling positive about what we're talking about here. If you don't give me a thumbs up and you're questionable, that's okay too. Thumbs in the middle, Rich, okay. Good. Mr. Geary, I can't see your thumb. Keep up the good work. Uh, I thank you so much. It's really good to see all your faces and um, I hope we're at Winoxa together. I think we will be. And um, for the uh, SPLs who are on the call, thank you. And uh, thanks for your hard work. The scouts need this uh, more than ever. And um, I, I, uh, I want nothing more to be at camp with all of you. So be safe and um, we'll do another meeting as we get closer. So thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody.